Okay, everyone. Today, I have decided to take on the Trackman's Devil's Island Front 9. So, let's dig in and see what happens. So, here we are on the first tee, 440 par 4. Uh, pretty tough looking tee shot considering the fact you can hit it 280 and still have 211 in according to the yardage markers. So, we get up with driver, hope for the best at this point. We've let it rip. Looking pretty good, heading down the fairway, getting the contours of the slope to work in our favor. That's not bad. A lot of slope, as you can tell, as the sucker rolls for forever. So that little cursor you see on the map on the bottom right is the target point, and it kind of released this way out there, 308, 180 left to the pin. Playing five yards up the hill. It says five iron, but I, th I swung seven in this instance. And uh, hope for the best on this one a little bit. Look, good looking little golf course. Seems very tropical in that sense. <laughs> you got all this palm tree looking places around you. But as you go through this round, you'll see there's a whole lot of weird undulations. So there goes the seven iron. I tugged it a little bit. Or a lot of bit. <laughs> Get up against a boulder, but luckily in simulator golf, a boulder's not real. So it doesn't really affect me too much. Had the right distance, wrong towards. So I got a 20 yard shot out of the heavy rough. And at the bottom right of that little screen, it says Trackman will show you like how much power and spin is reduced from a standard full shot off the fairway. So it's saying 85% power, 70% 70 of a normal spin rate would be what would happen out of this little spinach patch I'm hitting it from. So I took a little 58. Luckily my mat has rough. Hit a decent little pitch. Didn't quite hit it hard enough to get to the flag stick, so it's going to toss me a bone from 20 feet and give me an auto bogey to open the round. So the question is, can I break 40 on this golf course? It's supposed to be the hardest golf course ever. 7,600 yards from the back tee box. It's a fancy golf course, Trackman Design. So here we have a 415 par 4, but you can't bang driver in my instance because you got a fairway that runs out. So I hit three wood here. Um, and you got the wind, not really anything but behind you. Again, another weird hole. It says 415, probably as a crow flies because it goes 280 out and then 180 over. So that math doesn't equal 415 in my book. Uh, but, yeah, that's how golf courses get laid out sometimes. So it makes it interesting. Plays nine yards down the hill in general but this tee shot's playing seven yards up the hill as you can see by that little cursor so the time you're waiting for right now is me to take my time to blow it right into the the crap here as i towed three wood off into the jungle wilderness now if this was real life you'd be dead probably because of like an anaconda or monkey or some black widow spider that would come eat you alive tarantula is probably more appropriate so here I see I'm just going to take my medicine, aimed it left across the fairway, got like 50 yards to punch it back out, and uh, do damage control from here, even though I'm 184, and sometimes with Trackman you can't see what's in front of you to really discern if you got yourself a problem or not, so I just throw a little wedge back into play, we're in the fairway, looks like we got seven, 177 left, but here's the tricky part, and this is the part I'm dabbling with when I play on these Trackman rounds. We have 15 and a half yards down the hill. So I spent a lot of time here trying to calculate, does that mean it's going to play 162? Or is it going to play even less than 162? So I actually grab nine iron here and uh, just pray the whole time it flies over that pond just short of the green. Gets just to the front, ends up releasing out pretty good, which is pretty typical. Got like that much downhill slope, I imagine it'd be kind of hard to stop in some cases, especially if you don't get it on the green to cover. Again, Trackman throws me a two putt bogey from 20 feet. Thank you, Trackman. Now, this tee shot, I didn't know what the heck to do. Okay, so you got uh, basically the ocean, is what I'm gathering that is right. You got out of bounds left defined by that white line. Um, so I just kind of say, F it. I'm going to try and take driver left of the bunker. Because I figure I can carry those trees and 
hopes that I can get a good break and roll down to somewhere where I can hit a nice little flip wedge. Um, cause the tee shot playing it up the right side of the fairway didn't make any sense to me anyways, cause that's, it doesn't look like it's any easier <laughs> to try and hit. So I rope driver, I actually hit this one good. Um, unfortunately I hit it good enough to fly the bunker, catch the down slope and roll straight into the ocean. <laughs> so that was unfortunate to say the least. So we take our medicine. Trackman gives you a bunch of options to drop, not hitting that tee shot again. So I'm like, yeah, no, that's my only option. So we just back this baby up, get it on the fairway with a decent lie, in line with the fly, take my penalty stroke, got 100 yards left, and then I proceed to take a wedge here, uh, grab my 54, playing 10 feet up, calm wind, should be a stock and standard wedge right off the fairway from your third shot, trying to get up and down for four. Um, and, uh, at this point it's just kind of a, how good is your wedge game scenario? And I don't know why it's taking me so long to hit this shot as I watch back. Oh, gross underestimation of how far I hit my wedges as I came up way short, 88 yards. Now I get a wedge shot from a professional. Uh, standard chip up the hill, breaking a little left. 13 yards left. Just hit a little rinky dink chip. Bump, bump. Get to four feet. I think that's what it's going to come up and say. Four and a half. Take my gimme as anything inside of eight feet on track. Man, it is a gimme. Still on my bogey train. Currently cruising at three over par, going to the first par three. 190 up the hill, 12 yards. So I'm saying it's probably close to two hundo. Pins all the way in the back left. So I was kind of saying, all right, well, I'll just toss it in the middle of the green. And uh, the green's wider there anyways and see what happens. So I grab six iron here and proceed to almost shank it <laughs> as I flashed it into the bunker. Uh, not position A, one would say. 44 yards left, huge bunker face, tons of green to work with. Um, and at this point, I should have been a lot smarter and pulled up the green map to look at how the green's actually laid out to see what the slope's doing. Because as you'll see here, I throw this up here, and there's a massive slope that I did not anticipate for because I was lazy. So that's a lesson to you kids is uh, walk to the edge of the green and or in this case, pull up the green graph to see how the green's laid out. So that will be coming in future videos as I continue these rounds. And that's a smooth three putt from 70 feet for a double. So thank you, Trackman. All right. We, again, weird par five. It says 470, right? But as you're seeing, I'm like seeing how far is it that bunker is 290. It's 330 to carry. It's 11, 13 yards down the hill. And it's 270 to the to the green so i'm like screw it i can't get there anyways so i just bang driver and hopes maybe i just connect on one uh absurdly well fly the bunkers or otherwise i'll just hit an iron out of the bunker and wedge it on from there that was kind of my thinking at that point but i figured also the bunkers are the safest place on this golf course with all these slopes because at least the ball can't roll away from you <laughs> so i just bang driver hit it pretty good and at this point, I'm saying it's flying it. And then at this point, I'm saying it's not. <laughs> As you can see, I hop in there. Uh, so that was a gross underestimation of my talent, even though it did total 316. So it wasn't a terrible drive. Um, so they see my layup options. I got 213, their little layup point they want me to aim at. I'm like, that's a little too far to the right, hugging that hazard. I'm going to play a little more left. You know, what's 10 extra yards? And you still have, going to have a full edge into the green either way. So 100 to 110 to make a difference to me. So I grab five iron out of here, feeling like I can get it up over that lip. And I know the cursor at the bottom doesn't represent that, but can you imagine how much longer this video would take if I uh, decided to also <laughs> change the golf club. So hit a pretty decent five. At that point, I was sweating a little bit. I was hoping to fly that corner. It gets there, and I'm actually on a flat part of the fairway, which is rare. Um, on this fantasy golf course that Trackman has designed. 
and now you got your standard 108, 10 feet a drop. Going to try and hit a decent wedge down onto the green and uh, see if we can snuggle one up there for a birdie. And uh, that's kind of the strategy at this point on this hole because I don't know how else you can, I don't know how you could get it to where you can get home in two. I just don't see it on this golf course. And then you can see that my exceptional wedge play at the moment, throwing the wedge entirely too far to the right. And leave myself with 23 feet, fingers crossed for a one putt. And Trackman says, nah, we'll two putt you for par there, homeboy. All right, so now we got another quasi weird golf court hole here's 412 and you can't bang driver you got 260 to the end of the fairway so i hit three iron here um it says this play is total 12 yards 12.7 yards down the hill but this shot's playing eight inches uphill so it's basically flat um so i just grabbed my trusty old three iron that i like ripping from time to time on short par fours you can see that little low penetrating ball flight splitting hairs down the middle and upon hitting that tee shot, did I realize how freaking narrow that landing area is because that was real tight. That I'd, real life would probably have me shaking a little bit more <laughs> after the first round. All right, so now we got 158 coming down the hill, 13 yards. So, again, this is like that cluster of, you know, how much is actually 13 yards playing down the hill? Is it actually 13 yards or is it, you know, more than that? So I grabbed pitching wedge, which is about a 135 club for me. So I'm saying it's going to play a little – a little more than 13 down the hill with the wind behind as well. Hit an actually pretty good pitching wedge here that I'm actually a little bit proud of. Um, so that was actually a good little wedge shot for a change. Throw me that gimme party, baby. So I'm like, all right, we're getting one back on the field. Back to four over. Might be able to keep this thing under under 40. Uh, again, on the hardest golf course that Trackman's got longest well i don't know if it's the longest i know it's one of the longer ones at 7600 yards that's for sure so again i'm over here measuring on the bottom right if you can see that little cursor moving it's 390 to the other fairway and i have 260 to I'll run out of the fairway on the in front of me i'm like really 390 seriously like, i couldn't believe it like it didn't look like it was another 130 yards to that front edge of that little apron fairway but whatever so back to my three iron which behooves me at this point and uh as you will see, this three iron is less than perfect. Any minute now, I decide to rip three iron, and it's not horrible, I guess, but it definitely doesn't go down the fairway. It's a little tuggeroo. I just pan that puppy right up in that bunker. Ooh, and that point, that was like, I really thought that was going to bury in the lip, and I was just going to be toast. Got lucky. This is like where the math is like crazy, you know. You can't hit driver. I still have 270 in on a par four, you know, crazy. Um, and half of me is wondering at this stage, I should have just hit driver into that little roughage, I guess, past the bunker I'm in. Um, so at this stage, it's like 270. I feel like I'm far enough away from the lip. Let's try three wood. What the heck? What do you got to lose? Um, and I have hit three wood out of real bunkers before. It is a doable feat. It's not impossible. Um, so don't think for a minute you can't do it. You totally can. But unless the lip is as high as this one, in which case when I rip this three wood, it gets a little more questionable than I thought. Yeah, so this is me waffling on whether this is a good decision or not. But ultimately, I'd say three wood. Oh, and it hits that front edge of that lip. And I was like, get out of that bunker. And luckily, I've avoided the boulder that's in front of me. But I only hit that 87 yards, so I still have 180 left for a third. Um, and now I'm in there at what they call a deep rough, which surprisingly only takes 90% of your power down. Like That doesn't make any sense to me. I feel like if I'm standing in this cabbage patch, it would absolutely wreck my ability to hit a decent shot to the green. But I get bold and I just say let's just grab seven iron and see if we can catch a front piece of the green and not the case as I come up way short but luckily it rolls to the bottom of the bunker and I have an easy ish bunker shot coming up from the flat of the bunker 
So 25 yards left, up the hill. Obviously, it's mostly just over the lip to the flag. Should be a stock and standard bunker shot. So when I play bunker shots in the simulator, I use the rough, the deep rough, because I figure that simulates bunkers to the best of my ability. And again, I should have looked at the green putting complex surface, but kind of took a good guess that it was going to break right and got it within gimme range, barely. And uh, it's going to give me my bogey. So back to that plus five number again. Just angers me. Now this one I'm actually uh, like going, really? 245 par three? Um, that's big boy stuff, you know? So I actually look at that flag stick back left, way back to the left. And I was like, you know what? Let's. I feel like there's probably a little mound there just on the other side of that bunker. So let's keep it inside that bunker. It's 13 yards right, plenty of room to the right. Um, and let's toast a three iron here and see what happens. And uh, I actually get a little teased up about this three iron because I absolutely roast this thing. I mean, smoke it. Catches a good hop, releases way too much, but then plays this NASCAR-looking turn. I'm like, holy crap, that almost looked like a hole-in-one for half a second. And then now I'm like going, please don't fall off the green. Please don't fall off the green. Stay on the green. Quit rolling. Stop it. There we go. And something holds it up. Get lucky. Still on the putting surface. Somehow. 50 feet. Two putt par. Because I'm good from 50 feet. You can count it. So, last hole. Back in my mind, I'm like, all right, I'm plus five. I want to shoot under 40 here. Let's do something big. And I was like, I can carry that. So I got it set to 270, 280 is about my average carry. And uh, I'm like, I can do it. Playing 20 yards down the hill. I'm like, nine yards down the hill for that shot, 20 yards down the hill total. I was like, I got it. Let's do this. And uh, decided to bang driver. And uh, But, again, it's like weird math. It's like 270 down the hill, but then it still has like 200 yards. So it's like, But it says 440. They got these yards just as the crow flies, man. I actually at one point thought about aiming it up the right side and playing up the par three <laughs> and thinking I could cut a lot of distance off that way um, around this volcano that's in front of us apparently or whatever the heck that is. Um, but either way, I'd pull the cord on driver. And I'm thinking about splitting those palm trees down there and uh, hoping for the best because I never hit this tee shot, so I don't really know what to, to tell you here. So... Boom. Starts just a little right, and that cut was not intended. That was a bad release, and I don't know if I hit the volcano or the top of that tree first. But either way, I'm screwed as I fall down into the trees. <laughs> and I'm like, crap. So this is that part I was telling you, you can't really discern what's going on with Trapman, like what's actually in front of you. You're just looking at a bunch of greenery, and I'm like, you know what? I got 170 left. Screw it. Let's rip the cord on 8-iron. It's 15 yards down the hill. I said, if I get lucky and it comes out, you know, maybe it catches the front because it has like 87% power or whatever. Um, and I try and rip this 8-iron here in a second. And uh, hopefully it goes through the trees. But I guess Trackman doesn't really know how, you know, trees are supposed to be 90% air. Um, and so when I hit this 8-iron here in a second, you'll see what I mean. And that's the lumber. But good news is, kind of what I thought, I was so close to the edge, it didn't matter. As long as it got ahead of it, I would have a shot. So again, 118. And my true to form terrible wedge play because of my lack of practice in the last six months is about to show up right here. 118 back pin. I mean, again, this is another one of those situations where that pin's all the way back there. You could play it a bunch of different ways. You could fly it back there if you wanted to. You can hop and skip it up there. Um, I... Hit a very poor wedge shot. Uh, but I still found the putting surface. And uh, there seems to be a tendency of me fanning wedge shots to the right currently. So I want to work on that in future rounds. But on the putting surface, 67 feet. And then Trapman gives me one last FU with a awesome three-putt double. And that's how you close, ladies and gentlemen, to shoot a 42 on the front nine at Devil's Island. So I did not break 40, unfortunately.